Hello, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Learning at Washington University. This is Module 14, where we'll talk about GPUs and high-performance computing. This is Part 1, Using a GPU. For this class session, we are going to make use of a GPU. A GPU is the graphics processing unit that your computer normally uses to display the graphics. This device can be used to speed up the processing of neural networks. It can speed it up considerably. We're talking both about the GPU that's built onto your computer and then also using GPUs in Amazon Cloud. Your computer may have a GPU enabled on it. The computer that I often use is either a Macintosh or a a Windows Surface Book. The Windows Surface Book has a decent GPU built into it and sometimes I can run things that will normally take maybe an hour and 30 minutes if I ran CPU only. If I shift it over to the uh, to the GPU that's in my Surface, I am able to train that in considerably less time, maybe 20 to 30 minutes. So it's worth using the GPU just on a, a laptop. However, mobile laptop GPUs will never outperform the GPUs that are available in desktop computers or on cloud computers like Amazon Cloud. If you're dealing with a corporate situation where you need to install hardware into a server room, it might not be worth learning to actually set up your own GPUs and configure and install these these electronic devices in the server room. It might just be easier to run them on Amazon Cloud. And that's what I will show you how to do uh, this evening in this class. All right, I have set up on my, um, on my computer so that I can use different, um, uh, different configurations. So earlier in this class, or all throughout this, this class, you've seen where I, I make use of, if you've been paying attention to the URL, which you might not have been, it, it doesn't typically matter that much, but the URL that I have up here is jupiter.heatonresearch.com. So I am using a computer system that is at the, the, the studio at Washington University. This computer is built for production and, and recording these, these class videos that you've been seeing. It's not necessarily built to run advanced deep, deep learning, and I don't want to have to install TensorFlow and all this kind of stuff on the computer here, here in the studio. So what I do, or what I have been doing throughout this, this class session, is running these Jupyter notebooks in the cloud, actually on Amazon Cloud. So jupyter.heatonresearch.com, that's not a web instance running on my local computer, like when you're probably running Jupyter on your computers. This is actually running on an Amazon Cloud instance that I can spin up whenever I need it for this particular class. Now these instances that you that you can get from Amazon Cloud. So this one, this Jupyter uh, instance that I have here, this is running on an Amazon CPU only instance with eight gigabytes of RAM. Now I have other instances that I, that I will bring up, like when we were doing natural language processing, I brought up my 64 gigabyte instance because I just needed more RAM. But I don't want to use more expensive of a instance than I actually need. So I can basically just bring these computers up and down. I have them running, I have the interface to it running on my, my personal computer, which is sitting just, just to the side of me here, because I don't really want to log into AWS from computers that I, that I don't own just for security purposes. I am actually spending money when I bring up Amazon Cloud instances. And if my password, were to were to be revealed and get out into the uh, uh, into the public, that could potentially 
somebody could log in and and deploy deploy servers for me for fraudulent purposes and potentially use them to mine bitcoins or uh, send out spam email or some other some other money making technique that they that they might be interested in. So I can start these up over here. The Jupyter instance, jupyter.heatandresearch.com, that is running on an Amazon instance called a T2 large. So if we look at what these actually are as far as the instance pricing. So this is the page that you can go to on Amazon. I have a link to it in the class module. And it shows you what each of these instances actually cost. So I'm dealing with a T2, a T2 dot large is the normal one that I use for class sessions if I'm not doing anything overly intense. It's a decent instance. But you can see it here. There's definitely more powerful ones available. So there's two GPUs. So it's effectively dual core. It has eight gigabytes of RAM, which is enough for the vast majority of what we do in this class. Some of it requires more. And the cost per hour is not bad at all. It's less than 10 cents an hour. Then there's also these other two that I use, the T2.x large. This is a little more money, but it has more memory, 16 and then 32. So this is the one that I was using to demonstrate the natural language processing. It's not that much additional money, but I definitely don't want to leave that one running, so I make sure to disable it after I, after I leave um, from class. The GPU instance that we're dealing with is a P2.xlarge, which is really the Amazon sort of entry-level GPU instance. We can definitely run bigger, but for the purposes of this class, this is pretty powerful. So this is a P2 large, 90 cents an hour, so almost a dollar an hour. But you can see even the really, really advanced ones are just $4.56 an hour. Now that's a lot of money if you, if you leave it running all day and days on, on end. But this is, this is the one that we'll be dealing with in this class uh, this class session. So you can see it has uh, it has four cores. Let's see, I'm forgetting what the column has. Oh, and the memory is so it has four cores, 61 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it doesn't tell you on this page how many GPUs it has, but it does have just one. But it's a very powerful GPU, as we will see. It would cost thousands of dollars to buy that GPU yourself. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to switch back to, so this is my Jupyter instance. I am going to go ahead and run it. And when I say Jupyter, that's just my name. They're both Jupyter, but this is the one that is CPU only. So this is my CPU only instance. I am going to run, the helpful functions that we always run. And I'm going to run this little bit of code here. That just checks to see that TensorFlow is going, and it is. It's doing this basic multiplication. I am going to now run this part at the very bottom. And this shows you some timings that I made of this. So this is using, if I'm doing, if I'm doing GPU um, on this, this was with my Surface 2 GPU. So this is, this is basically um, 32, 32 minutes it took. CPU only, which is what this instance is currently equipped to do, will take about a hour and 13. Now the Amazon CPU instance might run faster or it might run slower than my, than my Surface Book. But that's what my Surface Book did. So even on, a, even on a laptop, which you don't normally think of as having an overly powerful GPU, it's worthwhile doing. You want to make use of your GPU if it's there and available. Now I should say this too of GPUs. TensorFlow makes use of CUDA, and CUDA is essentially 
a NVIDIA standard. So you're making use of NVIDIA GPUs. If you're thinking of buying your own GPU, the FutureMark ranking is, it's just www.futuremark.com hardware GPU. This is a really good site that shows you the different GPUs ranked and how powerful they are. Just in terms of raw compute capability, the NVIDIA Titans are really the, the top of the line, at least as of this recording. You can get very good um, results on those. And they're, the NVIDIA Titan, at least at this point, you can go to Amazon and you can get a NVIDIA Titan for around $1,500, at least as of this recording. These prices only drop, which is another reason for not necessarily buying this expensive of hardware. Now this is a big GPU and it, it takes up two slots in a normal computer system and requires considerable power. So you will, you will possibly be replacing your, your power supply as well in your computer. But this is the option if you wanted to install that actually yourself. Okay, so back to Jupyter. We, we ran the helpful function, and I am going to run this train down here. We're going to train, we've seen this before, we saw this in the convolution network section, but this is a, this is a decent sized neural network to predict the minced data, so the, uh, the digits, the zero through nine. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And it's going to start training. Now this is on a CPU instance. Now in parallel, I have, I have a GPU instance running as well, and that's at a different URL on my website. Now, by the way, you can't go to these URLs like jupiter.heatandresearch.com. It's going to prompt you for a password, and I'm not going to give you the password because those are my own, those are my own private systems. And if I'm not using them, the, it'll probably be down. You'll probably just get an IP error because those are not public servers. So anyway, this is running. My GPU instance is running off on another location. You can see it's gpu.heatandresearch.com. So this is a completely different instance altogether. I'm going to run it. Okay, that should have that part ran. I'm going to run this simple calculation. The simple calculation is actually now being done on the GPU. This is a handy function too that you can run that will tell you if it's finding the GPU. And you can see it is definitely finding the GPU. And this tells you what type of GPU that you have. It should be the same as the last time I ran it. But this is a Tesla K80. So we can look up and see how, um, how powerful that is. If I just go over to Amazon, and I search for a Tesla K80, there it is. So yeah, that's pretty expensive, 4,559. So this is a GPU, this is a Tesla class GPU, this is a GPU meant for the server room. This is not meant to play Minecraft on. I don't even know if you could play a video game on it. And if you notice, look at the GPU. There is not even a video um, output for this. This would be installed on a computer system that is in a server room, so there's probably not even a monitor plugged into its video. And if it did have video, it would probably be a secondary video source built onto the motherboard that would be a very simple GPU. So now let's go ahead and actually see what this thing is capable of. So this is giving you an idea. This is the same one as before, so I'm stealing my own thunder a little bit, but it takes an hour and 13. These are both on, oh, these I both timed on my MacBook Pro actually. So this 
And by the way, I should mention, current MacBook Pros come with AMD chips. So unless you have NVIDIA, you really cannot run this, you cannot use TensorFlow with a GPU. And that's just because TensorFlow, as of this recording, does not support OpenCL, which is the, the standard that is used to make use of non-NVIDIA hardware. It is the more open standard, but a lot more a lot more software seems to support the CUDA um, capabilities of the NVIDIA hardware. The exception might be Bitcoin mining. I, I've always heard Bit, and I have not tried to mine a Bitcoin. I've always heard Bitcoin mining was really better for AMD or even more so these days for FPGA, which field programmable gate um, computers. But look at this. Using the Amazon instance, the 90 cents an hour takes it down to 3 minutes and 32 seconds, which is amazing. So let's go ahead and run this. It's using a TensorFlow backend. Notice it's already on Epoch. Epoch 1. So that has started. It's now in Epoch 2. We'll put them side by side and do a race. So side by side race, CPU versus GPU. This is CPU on the left, this is GPU on the right. CPU had an early start and has already surpassed the, the uh, GPU, ha uh, CPU had an early start start but has already been surpassed by the GPU which is on which is now halfway done on Epoch 6 now 7 and CPU has not paid it made it past 2 so this this can really help this can really speed up your your training and you have to do the calculation as far as is is it actually less money to get the train done uh, the fact that Typically, the GPU is cheaper. You can do on-demand GPUs where you just literally tack them onto your a running instance on AWS, and you're charged per second. So, one the um, the CPU, the way that we did it, this would run for two hours of Amazon compute time at ten cents an hour, so about twenty cents. The GPU one would is going to finish in about 90 cents because it's going to finish in less than an hour. In fact, it's pretty much done now. But we also have a whole lot of that hour left. So getting the per second um, version, and you can see the accuracy is quite good. The accuracy should be about the same between between both sides. We're actually not going to give the CPU side a chance to finish, unfortunately. It just takes too long, but you can see the GPU, if you're doing anything serious with computer vision and large neural networks, this is definitely the, definitely the kind of thing that you want to be doing. That is the end of this part.